Today we are revisiting Black Ops 4 Zombies in 2024. On launch, this was regarded as being the worst zombies mode made by Treyarch and also the most unstable with multiple game crash and whatever. So there's actually a double XP right now, which I'm surprised that Black Ops 4 still has them, but that's cool. And of course, the first thing we do when we launch this game is head to the black market and see what kind of goodies we can get such as this amazing dance that <laughs> costs two dollars by the way if you ever want to dance in black ops 4 so good definitely worth two dollars what about this for five dollars we have the picnic royale included in bundle nothing <laughs> What the fuck is this store? Oh, it just disappeared. I can't even... What am I buying? It's... <laughs> it's gone. Okay. Or we can get juiced, which... I mean, just look at that. It doesn't even let you zoom on it or anything. It, it, they know it's so ugly that they don't want you to take a good look at it. They're just... Give me a dollar. Trust me. The one thing I will say about the Black Ops 4, because it, it had a big controversy when it was in its life cycle with the black market and how... Uh, the supply drops and how bullshit it was and it was impossible to get like dlc weapons and whatnot they did add towards the end of the life cycle the weapon bribe thing where well first of all you can get supply crates with daily challenges and all that which wasn't a thing at launch but also this allows you to get every single dlc weapon in the game for free basically just by playing you accumulate uh, these crates and you are able to purchase every single dlc weapon which is good, definitely appreciate it, because even games like like Black Ops 3, which are highly regarded by the community, don't allow you to do that. Now, of course, in Zombies, you can still use all the DLC weapons, but still, I think it's great that Black Ops 4 did that, especially with the whole controversy it had at launch, and how terrible it was, to actually be able to get every DLC weapon in this game is great, because not a lot of Call of Duties allow you to do that. I think the only one... Uh, that did something like that was Infinite Warfare back in the day. Anyways, enough about that. We're going into the best game mode here. Specialist HQ, obviously. <laughs> actually, I don't think I've ever played that, actually. The following section contains graphic content. If you wish to disable this content, go to settings and blah blah. You're playing Call of Duty. What did you expect? Graphic content, of course. Continue. Are you sure to... <laughs> yes. Oh, there's a cutscene and everything. This game does have a campaign. Who is that? Who are you? Who's Jessica? It's actually so sad that we have like these high quality cutscenes for fucking Specialist HQ. But Tag Der Toten <laughs> has this cartoon style fucking cutscene. We're going into the real game mode. The real shit. Here we are in Black Ops 4. Zombies. So one thing I will say, I absolutely hate the background, the slow motion background. It just looks bad. It really does every single zombie mode before that had a better main menu, to be honest, than this. I don't know what the fuck they, they weren't cooking with that one, to be honest. So that's what I was talking about. We actually, actually have contracts in this game that we can complete and they give us crates so we can get DLC weapons for free. And you can even get them for, for zombies. So literally all I play is zombies and I was able to get all the DLC weapons, which is nice because not all the Call of Duty games do that. So today our daily is to play 20 rounds of tag. So we'll do that. And for some reason they implemented this feature where you can customize characters now, I only have this one, which, which doesn't even appear on the character. What the fuck? Dude, this game is fucking glitched to hell. What the... Yeah, like I said, this feature is half-assed. As you can see, I cannot even equip. Let's try another character, maybe. Oh, why are you facing this way? By default, he was facing that way. And it still doesn't apply. Yeah, this game is fucked. And of course, we have the armory where we can customize all our weapons and unlock camos for them with... 3,600 headshots. God damn. Um, but yeah, eventually you get gold and diamond and black matter. And to be honest, uh, or dark matter, I should say. That is probably the one feature that uh, made me stay for so long on Black Ops 4 is grinding for all these weapons and getting all these camos. It's definitely a fun camo grind. Once you're done with the headshots, you get actually some decent challenges here. So, well, these are kind of shit, but stuff like heavy zombie kills, mini boss zombie kills, and you have some weapons that are actually garbage in this game, like the SX, for example, 
that gun, you need to get so many headshots and then kill bosses, kill heavies. Like, that is actually, if you have gold on this gun, I respect you, you know? And that's the thing about other zombie games, such as Cold War, for example, um, which Cold War is great, don't get me wrong, I enjoy Cold War, but that's one thing that Black Ops 4 did better, in my opinion, is that not every gun is good. Whereas Cold War, it doesn't matter which gun you have as long as you upgrade it properly. This game has some stinkers in it. And having gold on these guns, like for example, the Welling, this is the starting pistol, right? It, it, it's not good after round three. You only have 48 bullets in this thing. Now you need 2,400 headshots with this thing. It's the starting pistol, guys. Th this gun is garbage. If you have gold on this gun, again, I respect you. And that's what I actually liked about the camel grind on this game is that some of these guns are complete stinkers and actually having gold on them means something. Now the create a class system, a lot of people hate that. The fact that you have all your elixirs at, at all times is not that great. The cooldown is ridiculous. Once you get to round 20 and you use a classic go uh, elixir, you cannot use another one for like five rounds. It's ridiculous. They really want you to use, you know, the paid ones, which I never really use. I'm, I, I'm actually gonna, curious. I'm going to check my challenges here. Uh, elixirs. I, I've used one. I've used one consumable elixir on my alt account. So that tells you how often I use them because <laughs> I'm actually prestige five on this and I've only used one. So that's how useless they are but then the perks you know the fact that you can only get four perks on each map is kind of weird but still i would i would argue it's still better than having all the perks like cold war because that's just that's just ridiculous that's op and having every perk on every map kind of takes away from the identity of the map itself and black ops 4 definitely had this problem don't get me wrong i think black ops 4 with its map selection was actually able to have each map have an identity either way. When I play Black Ops 4 and I play a match of Dead of the Night compared to a match of Tag Their Toten, those are two completely different maps with different stories, different everything. It doesn't feel the same. Of course, you could actually select your starting weapon and I mean, the fact that you're actually not able to use every gun is a good idea. But to be honest, if you put the Mug 12 and the Strife in there, which is like two of the best weapons in the game, uh, that kind of breaks the whole thing. So I don't know if they would have really just put shitty weapons in here. I think it would have worked better. But the fact that we have two OP ones, um, kind of stupid. Same with the equipment. Honestly, I think we should all start with a frag grenade and unlock those in game because the Wraith Fire is just so OP. You have no reason to use the other ones and starting with it is just dumb. Same with the special weapons. I don't know why you have four and every player can use whatever. You could have four scepters in the game, which completely breaks it. Obviously, if there's one that is a lot better than all the others, then that's the one everyone's gonna use. So there's really no point in having four, especially when you give one revive abilities and the others don't. Why wouldn't you use the revive, especially if you're playing solo? So anyways, Definitely lots of mistakes here with the creative class system. The talismans also were really stupid, in my opinion. They activate when you start a match. So for example, I could start with a perk or with an AR or even an extra self revive. For that whole match, I'm gonna have that. The thing is, the game was so fucking unstable, it would crash all the time that you would just waste your talisman. That system definitely did not work properly at launch. But yeah, also you had challenges in this game you have the 100 percenter, you can actually go and grind out all these challenges and some of them are actually very hard, some of them are just very grindy, but it does make you use weapons and equipment that you wouldn't otherwise. And other things like prestigious actually require you to level up your gun uh, to the maximum level and then get kills with the operator mod, which by the way, the operator mod was actually a great system. You also had custom mutations, which I actually never used once, to be honest. You can like change settings. You can change your starting round, the round cap, uh, a timer, special rounds. Like you have a bunch of stuff here you can tweak, kind of like uh, Black Ops 2 with uh, the private matches. Like, look at all that. 
if you want to do like challenge runs or whatever, that's definitely great. The thing is, nobody ever uses it. But it seems great to create content, but no one seems to really be using it. So I'm going to be playing just norm normal. Because again, this game has difficulty. It had casual, normal, hardcore, realistic. I only ever play normal. I didn't really fuck around with the other difficulties, to be honest. Because easy is too easy. Hard is kind of hard and realistic is just dumb yeah we're playing my boy rustman okay we're loading into tag their totem right now we're gonna do a 20 round match and here we are on the very last ether map if we don't count dark ether tag their totem remaster or remake of call of the dead I'm actually gonna work on these headshot challenges right now. But yeah, that's the thing about this uh, headshot challenge is you really have to just stick to the welling, which even though the game allows you to use other starting weapons, if you want to get this gun gold, you really have to stick with it for a long time. Alright, so we're actually gonna open this way, get another shield part over here. I'm just gonna lower the sound a little bit. That's another thing that Cold War changed, is the whole armor system. This game still had the shield system, which actually I liked a lot in this game. It was similar to Black Ops 3, but also a little bit like the World War II version of the armor. Uh, whereas you get a shield, but every time it breaks, you need to buy another one and it gets more expensive. So you're rewarded for not letting zombies break your shield as often. So the better player you are, the more you are rewarded re rewarded for it. Sorry, I can't speak English apparently. So yeah, I actually really liked that. And also I just realized I have the wrong class equipped. I have fucking Deadshot for some reason. <laughs> okay, <laughs> guess we're uh, rolling with that. That's another thing about the classes is that it's so easy to just not equip the right one by accident. Especially if you switch from a ether map to a chaos map. Also, if you're wondering why I don't have any dialogue on, it's just because I usually play with dialogue off in this game. Uh, because most of the dialogue is absolutely abysmal and annoying. But sadly, it also turns off like the max ammo and everything that you would usually hear. But you know what, for this video, I'm actually gonna put it back on. There, we'll get some voices for the video at least, so you can see what I'm talking about here. We're actually gonna go and roll the this box. Hold looks more like a fishing hole now. Okay. These little guns remind me of Marlton. Once they start yapping, they never shut up. <laughs> okay. But yeah, I actually have a ch uh, contract Shit to fire. get a bunch I'm of guns from the box. Ammo. So I'm gonna do that. I'm gonna trade off this swelling here. And we actually got this the plane good. gun. Hell Plus yeah. Money. I mean, look at this beauty of a gun. It's actually a Mastercraft camo. I uh, don't remember when it came out, but you can have your gun as an airplane, which I thought was really cool. There's some very creative Mastercraft camos in this game. Dude, where's the last zombie? Oh, there he is. He's a fire zombie. He walks. He's a slow boy. There you go. Okay, so I think I'm okay with these weapons for now. I'm actually gonna open here, get the last shield part. Oh, duck round. Mm, I cannot find this last part. I think it's a bit further up. Oh, there it is. So we're gonna open this. And of course, we have the uh, George Romero glasses, which give us 500 points. Cool little Easter egg there. Paying tribute to the man, the legend. And we're gonna get the shield here. Bam. Rock goblins feel more like it. And you know, this is actually one of the last games to use like all the classic sound effects and music, oh, like the okay. rounds changing, the max ammos and all that. Like Cold War definitely changed all that to understandably because it's the dark ether story. They had to do things a little bit different, but man, like those sounds just from Black Ops 1, they're they're just so iconic, man that it's great to have them still in this game. All right, we're gonna continue opening the map here. Do wanna get Pack-A-Punch to get this contract done. And of course, we're gonna get the free 100 points from the perk because you should always get your points 
from the perks. The Black Ops 4 Zombies maps definitely had a lot of stuff to remember and know about. Like grabbing this part here. You just had to know where everything is and remember and have like a good route to get all of it done as quickly as possible which got a bit tedious especially for some maps like dead of the night which is a big reason why i don't like the map that much compared to the others opening pack a punch on this map is, uh, is an easter egg quest in of itself it's probably harder than the die machine easter egg but i feel like maps like tag their totem are a lot better with this where pack a punch is a bit easier to get Fight well, poor civilians. Keep up, and the Garthen device is yours for certain. Oh, I forgot Nikolai actually talked to you. It's been so long since I've played this game with dialogue that I, I forget. <laughs> oh, yeah. No, sir. Give me that insta kill. Not sure why, but I am. Man, the fact that they were able to bring back all the voice actors from BO2 is actually really cool. Like, they really didn't have to do back. that. A lot of games, like, 10 years later when they... Well, I guess it was only 6 years later, but still. When uh, they bring back old characters, usually they don't have the same voices. Kind of like the Dead Rising remaster coming out. But, I mean, that is, that is almost 20 years later, so that's more understandable, but still. Okay, I should probably start getting some perks. Gonna get over here, get this perk. Stun, cold, strong, cold. Oh yeah, and let's go ahead and get Pack-A-Punch open. We're gonna get all the way to the top of this uh, lighthouse here. I actually hate that you have to wait for him to stop talking to actually give him the stuff <laughs> especially when you have dialogue turned off it's just you're just sitting here waiting you just kind of have to stay alive here while he just talks to you no urgency at all or anything hey got a new camo there you go the nuke is so bright in this game compared to the other games it's a literal flashbang at 4 a.m and that's the last power switch that we need. And now we have Golden Pack-a-Punch. How much is that shot? Uh, 3,000? Okay, we'll stick around here and get that shot. Because there's really no reason to go back up here. Unless you're doing like the Easter Egg or something. Which, the Easter Eggs in Black Ops 4 were actually really good. They were hard, but they were fun to do, most of them. The Voyage Easter Egg, <laughs> it's a bit annoying, but... Still, uh, the Morse code and blood as well, but I feel like most of the Easter eggs in this game are really fun and actually challenging to do, which is like you really need to get a crew of people who are invested in the game and doing the Easter egg to be able to do it. Which, uh, for Black Ops 6, I believe that they're actually gonna try to make the quests harder, which, I mean, thank God, because in Cold War it was an actual joke. Okay, so now that we got that shot, we're gonna get out of here. I'm too damn old and fat and I mean, to be damn, doing this look at this shit. map. This game actually looks pretty good for a six-year-old game. It's not, like, amazing or anything, but... Still holds up, especially on PC. Alright, so we're gonna grab the last few perks that we need here. Oh yeah, and the specialist weapon is kind of dumb. I mean, look at this. I'm just... Going. <laughs> like, that seems like a weapon you should get later. I know it's kind of like beating a dead horse at this point. Uh, everybody's already said it, but it, it's still stupid that you have this as you start the match. It's ridiculous, man. All right, got ourselves Mule Kick. I'm gonna go spin the box, see what we can get here. I do need to spin the box like 20 times, so let's get started on that. And oh, the crossbow, interesting. The crossbow is actually really good in this game. When you pack a bunch it, it's really OP against like the Blightfather and the Gladiators. Like every mini boss zombie just gets absolutely destroyed by the crossbow. Oh, that's right. Carpenter actually repairs your shield, which is pretty cool. Because you usually get a Carpenter at least every two to three rounds. So if you're able to keep your shield alive for that long, then you don't have to pay to get a new shield. You just get the power up. So again, the game rewards you for not letting your shield break. 
And actually, look at this. I'm actually, I have like a purple color and yellow on my airplane now. And that's another cool thing about Black Ops 4 and uh, Mastercrafts is that they actually change colors or designs as you get kills with them. So, and that's also the case for uh, the diamond camo and the dark matter camo, which is really cool. I wish that they would keep doing that. Like for all the bad things that Black Ops 4 did, it, act it actually introduced some pretty cool mechanics. And sadly, they haven't really stuck with it. But yeah, Mastercrafts are really cool. In my opinion, they, sh they should bring that back to Black Ops 6. Look at how OP this Raid Fire is. I can just sit here and let them all walk in front of me. There, just... Come on. Try, try and kill me. Go ahead. Nope, can't do it. Alright, I'm gonna go and get this last perk that I need. So I can actually unlock my ability. Which I believe with Deadshot is just higher headshot damage or whatever but so i usually put electric cherry as my fourth perk because it's really good uh but yeah if you use the, the scepter while your electric cherry buff is active that shit just destroys bosses it's actually crazy you can kill the blight father in like three or four kills so that's pretty cool I'm gonna keep rolling this box here and oh, sniper. Okay. Bam. I'll show you my qu quick scope skills anyway. here. Oh yeah. I'm so good at this game. Oh yeah, popping off right now. Ah, oh, I missed. Okay. Fun fact: if you're using the Ragnaroks, uh, you can just instead of using left click or whatever it is on the controller. Oh, I, I fucked up. I missed the power up. Uh, yeah, you can just use whatever button that you use to put it down when it's level 3 maxed out. Uh, you just use that button and you're actually gonna attack with it without you, like, launching in the air. Or jumping, I should say. So, if you're, like, stuck in a corner or whatever, you don't have, like, enough space to jump with it, you can just kind of like put it down and it actually attacked there we have pack a punch over there i'm actually gonna trade that sniper because it's kind of garbage not gonna lie m16 nice that's actually interesting this is the only door i believe in any map that allows you to like open the door without uh buying it you just shoot the water on the top of the fire and it opens it's kind of interesting oh yeah and also you have like these obstacles here where you need to get the the bomb or whatever to open them which i didn't do because i'm i don't really feel like doing that low quest right now but that's something else you can do and interestingly if you actually press f on this uh it will kill you so yeah, spoilers, <laughs> but I think everyone's played the map at this point, but it's kind of funny because that's the kind of thing that you look at and you're like, oh, I'm going to interact with this just to see what happens because that's what you do in Black Ops Zombies and then you just die, which I think is funny. I don't know. I, I always enjoyed that. Yeah, I'm going to need to repack this gun because we're getting into the rounds where pack a punch is pretty much essential. Well, I mean... You still have your specialists and everything, so not really, but still. Alright, the box, or not the box, the pack of punch is still there. It's probably gonna go away as soon as I get to it, but I'm still gonna try to get there before it moves. Come on, don't leave on me. Let's repack this gun. And it moved, I didn't have time to pack all of it. And, oh my god, that was, actually got stuck there. But, thankfully, I had Dying Wish. Which allows me to stay alive with 1 HP. Oh, this guy almost hit me. And, oh, clutch specialist weapon here. Okay, we're getting into the into the crazy rounds here. Round 20 is definitely when things start to pick up in this game. Which, at this point, you should have figured out how to get back a punch and all that stuff. Which, actually, the thing I liked about Black Ops 4 at release is that pack a punch was not, like super obvious to get on these maps like i don't think i've actually got pack a punch on any of the first matches i played on any of these maps um well maybe tag to be honest because it's really easy on tag but at least the four launch maps i know for sure i didn't 
I wasn't able to get the back punch on my first match, Old which spray is spray, great huh? because well, I don't know. I, I feel like pray. pack a punch. It adds a, bit, a little bit of repel, replayability where it's like, oh shit! I didn't even find pack a punch. I need to play this map again and figure out more stuff. Whereas Cold War, it's like the first time you play. I'm gonna try not to die here. Put this and get out of here. Yeah. Uh, the first time you play, that you actually uh, get everything you need. Zipline on cooldown. What the fuck? It's zipline, dude. What are you talking about? So yeah, I think that's another thing that Black Ops 4 did well. Some maps went a bit too far with it, like Dead of the Night, for example. I think it's just ridiculous on how to get pack a punch. It's really annoying. But other maps, like I don't know, nine, uh, which might not be complete completely obvious on how to get it on your first match unless you're uh, really actively looking for it um, it's, it's a bit more subtle is what I'm trying to say I don't like how uh, Cold War just showed you with markers and everything where to get back a punch I, I feel like it being a little bit more subtle it's a bit more satisfying to figure it out by yourself you actually feel like you did something like you learned something like you discovered something uh, even as simple as it might be, uh, I, I feel like it's more satisfying for the player than showing you where it is and letting you use it. Firebomb, that's good enough. The Maddox is actually really good. I'm gonna pack this as well. I'm gonna switch out this M16 because without attachments, that gun is actually garbage. And we are gonna go to the Golden Pack Bunch. Which actually... <laughs> Russ man! But yeah, oh, actually, exactly it uh, upgrades your weapon fully, so instead of having to pack a punch five times, you only have to pack a punch once. And we have this amazing shitty music, which I hope isn't copyrighted, I actually have no clue. I doubt it though. Not that it matters, because my channel's not monetized, but still, I don't want it to be blocked or anything. Okay, we have 5,000, I'm gonna put this thing in right, here, bro. okay. Got the gun. I need to get that carpenter before my shield breaks. Okay. That was close. One more hit and it would have been destroyed. It's actually not easy to survive here. And we're gonna get launched out of here. There we go. It, which doesn't make any fucking sense, but still. <laughs> Reminds me of, like, Crash Twin Sanity when the TNTs go off and Crash just gets taken to the next island, and now there's a boss. We have some pretty good weapons, now I just need to get more guns from the box, which I didn't really think about because I just pack a bunch of all my guns here. Uh, let's see, I need eight more. Ah, fuck it, we're, I'm just gonna switch that right, and then. get this contract Rush done here. I have two other back bunch quick. weapons. Away. The outlaw. Oh my god, what is this atrocious camo I have on? Holy shit. <laughs> oh, that's actually a really cool SMG. It, it looks kind of bad right now because it's round 24 and it's not back bunch, but trust me, it's actually a pretty good SMG, especially with attachments. And that's something else I really like is that the attachments actually make a big difference on your weapons. Which Cold War has like so many attachments that like it doesn't even really matter what you put on the gun. In this game it's like hey you have like 10 choices you can pick like 5 of them just pick whatever you want to have and it makes the gun better. It's a bit more simple and I think for zombies you know for multiplayer it's fine to have like so much choice and be able to really make your weapon uh as good as you want it to be because it's pvp but for zombies i always felt like the attachments in cold war just made the whole thing like cluttered for no reason uh, where they should have just simplified it for zombies that's something i like also about this game is that zombies is like it's complete like separate game mode with its own ranks its own challenges uh, its own camel grind, everything. It, it gives zombies a bit more... I should get a new shield. Um, it gives zombies a bit more of a... It makes it feel like its own game mode. 
that belongs and that can actually stand on its own two feet. Whereas Cold War, it's like it the, it feels like the zombies mechanics rely so much on the multiplayer part of the game that it kind of it kind of loses some of its identity because of that. And I think Black Ops 6 is probably going to have a similar problem, in my opinion. And it might seem, you know, throughout this video I've been comparing this game to Cold War. Uh, I might seem like a Cold War hater. I'm not a Cold War hater. I actually enjoy Cold War, but I do enjoy Black Ops 4 more than Cold War. And those are the reasons for me. Because for all the faults that Black Ops 4 has, at least... It still had, like, the zombie DNA, it still had, like, some soul into it, and, I don't know, I feel like Cold War kind of misses that a little bit. Oh, the ray gun. You don't even need to know how it works. Like Damn, three shots on round 26, that's kind of bad. Oh my god, look how terrible this is. I'm gonna switch it out, fuck it. <laughs> and there we go. Contract done. Although I'm gonna keep spinning because I don't want to keep that M16. Man, the zombies hit so fast in this game, it's crazy. Alright, let's see what the box is gonna give me now. Eh, <laughs> teddy bear, okay. I see how it is. Damn, we're already on round 27. Oh shit, my shield's gonna break. Yep, it broke. Okay. Bam. Oh, lost my armor. It's fucking fire zombies. I should just grab like a snowball and get rid of them. I'm actually gonna do that right now. Get a snowball. I can a snowball pretty dang hard. Just gonna Bam. get this guy. Okay, so oh, my God. Okay, dying wish. I forgot I didn't have a shield. Hit me in the back. Right, I'm gonna Dude, okay. I pulled out my specialist and I still died. I guess the armor didn't count. That happens very often in this game. <laughs> they never fixed that where you used your specialist, but you still die even though it's supposed to give you armor when you pull it out. Oh, oh, oh my god. Everything's falling apart here. Round 27 is not kidding around. So, yeah, I guess I lied. We uh, actually are gonna be coming back up here. And we are getting Deadshot back because Deadshot is the best perk in Call of Duty Zombies, obviously. Where's the box? Oh my god, the box is up there too. God damn it. I guess we're going back up again. I could just grab a wall weapon too, to be honest. Uh, where's the vapor on this map? Maybe I'm all the way up top. Yeah, there it is. Alright. And we all also have golden pack. We're gonna go and upgrade that vapor. And this map's just beautiful, man. I mean, look at that sunset. Definitely more vibrant than some of the recent zombies maps we've had in other games. Here we go again on around 29. Dude, it barely does any damage, even though it's fully packed. Oh. oh, clutch. Oh, fuck. No. God damn it. Yeah, should have known that would happen by going here. Probably shouldn't have gone here, but I don't really care. Actually, I think I just lost. I lost the gun that was my mule kick that I even came here for. <laughs> That's funny. And there it is. Okay. Well, that was a good match. 29 rounds. Got all the contracts done. So, yeah, that's an average match of Call of Duty Black Ops 4 Zombies in 2024. Hope you enjoyed, and uh, I will see you in the next one. Thanks for watching. Bye-bye.